Hey everyone, I wanted to remind you that waylays and melees are a bunch of adults using adult language talking about adult content, so viewer discretion is advised. Thank you. Last time on Waylays and Melees. From the village <laughs> of Ark! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm only gonna ever say that once or two more times. One or two more times. Ever in the campaign. Ark! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna try. <laughs> so, where are you? <laughs> there you go. Where are you from? Ark! Uh, so being sent out, you are being sent to um, the southwest, uh, another one of your your fletchling siblings, I guess? Okay. However... Hatchling. Hatchling, yeah, but like... No, that would be like my baby. I right. didn't have any babies. <laughs> that would I'm, be like my quail babies. I'm, I'm still no. baby. <laughs> I'm like, fuck them quail babies, all right? <laughs> I don't think you can fuck quail babies. There's so many laws against it. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Jess, what are you doing? Mind my own business. <laughs> Please don't report me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you got the number on speed dial. <laughs> I'm not ready to deal with them, right? Uh, I think there's a lot of... <laughs> I foresee a lot of that happening in this campaign. <laughs> I'm going to be doxed by Pete. <laughs> in the arms of the angels. It's just like like a zoom in black and white of Jess's face. Like, <laughs> fuck these flushlings. <laughs> Your character wasn't supposed to be the trouble character. Like, <laughs> there were other characters made that I thought were going to be so much worse than this. Waylays and melees now. From broken homes to the gray white. Unsettled souls Roaming through this life As we all try to do We try to do what's right But it's a long, long road To ride Until you cross To the other side Peace, find your soul Wrapped in warm and love Cause we all try to do We try to do a stride But it's a long, long road To ride Oh, it's a long, long road To ride Elliot Welcome back, dude Um and welcome everybody to uh, Waylays and Melees. I am your DM, Seamus, and today we're going to be doing uh, Session Zero for... Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> you do like, like you're recording your voice message on your phone. Elliot. <laughs> We've got a, uh, the Vocera system that we use at work, like, so it's like you got to record your name. Yeah, I got the coolest sounding one. It's Elliot Travis. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Like, like it's going to play every time you walk into a room. Oh, hell yeah, dude. You have a call from Elliot Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Look behind you. Uh, all right. And, and, um, actually, I think this is how we do it. So I'm, I'm kind of just going to dive into this. Um, you have before you the map. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of give you familiarize familiarize you with the whole situation, we are going to start in the eastern mountain range, um, on the on the east side of the eastern mountain range. The Gelga Pass. Um, yep, south of the Gelga Pass, mm -hmm. about halfway between the southern tip of that range and the Gelga Pass. Um, in it is a uh, quiet village. Um, which you have only had the recollection of uh, the last, say, six or so months, uh, maybe six to eight months um, of entering. Um, you had been, your earliest memory so far is that you were 
being transported relatively in the dark, like in a canvas covered wagon um, amongst other uh, of your kind. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and it made frequent stops from wherever you originated from. Uh, what you now recognize would be probably further north, closer to the Gelga Pass. Um, it made several stops as it made its way southward. Uh, and you seem to be, out of, out of the 13 or so of your kind, you seem to be the second to last stop. Um, and you were the only one to get off on this stop. Okay. Um, okay. In getting off on the stop, you uh, climbed out of the wagon, uh, emerged into the sunlight, and what does the camera see? So, uh, pause. Here. I guess I don't have a name currently. You jumped the gun super fast. Hey! Hey! Here's my full name. <laughs> uh, my character is a warforged fighter. He is six foot ten. Um, he is made of a blackened steel with other colors and uh, implements as well as as far as how warforged are built from nature um, with wood and and uh, bindings and and things from trees and and stuff like that um so he's like a darkened black and steel and he has some red accents and uh he is he's quite tall and he's not the bulkiest but he is still quite heavy okay being made of tree and metal dig it uh are we going I know you've showed me a picture on your phone, but are we going more like Ghost in the Shell type of thing? Are we going more like stone? All right, so so the way that a lot I see a lot of people do War is they'll do one of two ways, um, which I'm okay with, but I'm also okay with like going a completely different way. Yeah. So the first way is normally people will go the the way that it was kind of described originally, which would be like um, kind of magical stone mm -hmm. with like runic inlays and then like uh um greenery would be like vines for the muscles and like bark to hold it in stuff like that and like so it'd be like this uh marriage of stone and and um plant uh and then it would be magically imbued and you walk around in the warforge then other people do more of the um your like clockwork right right stuff which is what i think a lot of people think of um is like this uh robotic automaton that is sentient um i do think i like like that more but we could what i was gonna say is we can go even even further still a completely different right way than those other two and go more of a modern like look and feel to it if that's what you're into and i do like that like the more like streamlined like robotic um i certainly do like that appearance uh I guess that's kind of more where I was leaning as and as far as like the the implements of like nature and and stuff I saw more as like uh as far as um you know creating like a circulatory system or something like that I figured that would still probably be utilized internally okay but uh but yeah definitely more metallic than than stone uh, it he doesn't look much like a golem as far as okay. as, as that goes, but uh, yeah, definitely like metal more stone plates and, and, and skin, right? And uh, and bolts and and things like that that would have been uh, probably not wrenched in there. I don't know what kind of technology we have, but well, it's it's dwarven forged, not like the company, like right. like the thing. Um, so. We can, like it's hammered, D &D. We can do whatever we there. want. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, uh, it can be that it would be quasi organic. Yeah. Like a like a synthesized organic, you know, organic uh, composite because, um, you also have, you know, the Lord dictates that you also have like fae and and elves having to do with like imbuing it. So it might be a uh, combined effort mm -hmm. of like maybe the dwarves made the shell. And the elves made the innards, and then either the fae and the elves uh, finish it off. Um, so it could be that. We don't, we don't know. We're all in this 
journey together. I do like, you know, the, the picture I showed you, um, I do like that one a lot. The I do really like, like, the more robot robotic looking ones too so i, I guess we'll, we'll kind of say maybe at least for now um until i land on exactly what i want to look at i'll probably try to draw them out at some point yeah. to myself of course but you say these things man and the last thing i think you drew was that airship which was badass but that was like five years ago <laughs> so you're like you're like you're talking like i can't draw i'm like bitch i know you can draw you just don't <laughs> like i haven't seen your stuff man i'm so i, I love your stuff i can but i don't yeah i can but i have not i don't know i think it's this one's different yeah. <laughs> I, know, I hope so man i like your work I, it's always so badass to see your stuff um john robots is cool i just like to see your junk is what i'm trying to say um <laughs> uh he nonchalantly says um, what we can also do as well is an upgrade system. There might be room for upgrades, um, in cosmetic yeah. and utility and such. Mm -hmm. So, well, I certainly, uh, you know, as far as my class goes and, and armor for Warforged, um, they don't just put on armor and wear it. They actually implemented it in yeah, their bodies, so I'm I'm thinking there. like just straight up like robot. Yeah. Uh, what what my subclasses? So this, I think that would be really cool to implement some of that stuff just directly into my armor, and yeah. uh, like the like the headwear um, as far as they have like the different crests and symbols and stuff on there. Um, probably will, just won't end up being a helmet. It'll actually be a part of my head. <laughs> yeah. So I think that like that crescent moon that yeah, goes up, dude. Absolutely, shit like that. Yeah. So and I don't want because I I certainly like uh like the hat, um, so I don't know if I want to put that like permanently on on my head, but uh, I think that we could make for that like your your chrome right your your dome piece mm -hmm. is bare, but that you could put something on it, or that it may even have ports. Right. Uh along the sides so that if something were to be made you could slide it on and it could be some sort of crown or helmet or hat um that does something yeah uh and be taken off mm -hmm. so okay yeah. yeah i like that no and i definitely because because when i'm thinking about like um you know what are my ambitions and, and whatnot and i think a lot of them will come to light as i start to recall things and and uh go down that path but um, when it comes to, like, money and things like that, you know, some characters and, and classes and races just don't have any need for it. But I I think mine, he's he's going to be all about just becoming better and stronger and, and more capable of doing the things that he wants to do. <laughs> uh, with that, it's perfect. With that, um, we cut back to uh, a shot of the Warforge's feet landing upon the soft dirt and uh fairly loud boom, as um you tremble the the uh ground below you and dust kind of wisps into the air and we pan up to see um that you have this kind of uh what you say worn weathered black metal mm -hmm. um with red accents and kind of different accents in, in uh other places it's like a um, black steel like a so it's still got some shine to it, but like, it's like tactical steel, right? Definitely right? beat up looking. So it's not, yeah. and it does have have more of like a steel look to, or iron, or um, you know, other metal. So it's not just, you know, as black as my dice tray here. Right, it's not obsidian right, by any means, right, but exactly. yeah. Um, as it pans up, you see that you don't actually have any real gear on you. Um, you have kind of a duster cloak on that's fairly, you know, probably, um, extremely common. And this one's probably a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down. Um, uh, no hat to speak of, but you have, um, the, uh, a training sword mm -hmm. that, that you're holding in your left hand. No, no holster or anything. Um, and a sigil on the, um like a brooch uh that's holding the this ragged cloak on you um and this uh sigil has on it um what seems to be uh either an ornate 
phoenix or an ornate dragon uh, head. It's kind of hard to tell because of just the, the elaborate um, way that it, it could mesh into either one. And to um, me, it's... Yeah, they're just curves and, and geometry to you. Right. Um, Some shape I've never seen. Yeah, especially upside down. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to take it. Oh, it's on... I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... I... I... I want to know this too because this might be super fun. Um, do we want to do like the computer uh, text in your vision? As far as like uh, like what I see or what? Other... Yeah, like no, what you would see, only you. So like how how your vision works in the world. So like. You have like, like the face recognition, right? Where it's just trying to like scope in on yeah, people, like a, like and then, a HUD or yeah, a HUD. And yeah. then when somebody tries to attack you or your friends, and they turn red, or something along those lines. I like that. Yeah, you a, dig that? Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, too bad because we're not gonna do it now. Now um, that you like it so much, everyone yeah, else gets it. I only it. liked it because I thought you liked it. No, actually. everyone else gets it but you. So I mostly get it. I did choose two, and then maybe um. Maybe you can help determine this. So the the average uh, life, as far as Warforged go, showed to be two to thirty years old, and nobody really knows how old they live because they don't necessarily age. Um, I don't. I don't really have a a lifespan for them. I don't think right. they should have. One. I put. I put that I was two. Okay. I don't know if we want to be younger you, than that. Or I I like that. Your best guess is that you're two. Right. Like. So. As far as memory goes, like you, the the best memory you have is that transit one, but you kind of have other memories before that. Right, because obviously I'm walking and, and able to, to move around. Yeah, and... so there must have been some t some programming time, okay. uh, some training time of some sort. Um, but during this time, uh, this is a few months back that you arrived. Okay. Um, well, I said six to eight months. So six to eight months ago, you arrived at this village. Um, and when you did, uh, you entered in and you see the village. And above it um, has, uh, uh, to top left of your HUD, um, it has uh, location, semicolon, arrived. And then below it, it says objective, colon, uh, semicolon, semicolon. Um, I just like saying colon. That's all it is. I'm a I'm a butt guy. These could be that's... dashes. Uh, Object dash. dash. <laughs> hyphen, hyphen. <laughs> um, you broke her hyphen. Uh, that's different. Um, so, objective, uh, rendezvous, rendezvous, um, uh, with commander, um, for training. And as you enter into, when you approach the village and you begin to enter into it, um, you can see that there is, uh, just in the gates looking in, um, you see that there's a, a very obvious training ground um, behind that, a barracks. Um, and as you kind of enter in further, you see off to the right is more of your like shop, uh, your butcher, your uh, blacksmith, stuff like that. Um, and then... Uh, leading in towards the training ground, you see that there is a small squad that's that is doing their um, katas, you know, their their uh, forms. Um, and uh, as you enter in, you see this small, relatively small to you, because you're six ten. Good mm -hmm. God! Uh, and you look down, and there's this this small. Um, either she's a halfling or a half elf, something. Um, they're all kind of the same to you at this point. Uh, hair pulled back, black hair, um, fair skin, pointy ears, uh, but like a small point, not like, you know, straight up elf. Um, and it looks, imagine, if you will, uh, Ping from Mulan. Okay. Not, not Mulan as she is normally, but Ping, Ping. right? Yeah. But like a little guy. bit longer hair, mm -hmm. not in a ponytail, but like, um, pulled back in a fairly large bun okay. um and uh she's fairly well armored as well she has started started leather on she's 
outfitted with an actual sword, um, a katana, and a wakasashi beside there. Um, you see that there's kind of a dagger, uh, tanto on, on her uh, other side, her right side. Um, and she stops you. She says... Uh, How tall is she about? She's about like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, Okay, so, so she's like you're not, looking down. Yeah, she's not. Yeah. Okay. If she was a halfling, I was gonna like squat down. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you approach, she she says, um, "Are you send new recruits?" Yes. All right. Follow me into the barracks, and she's going to bring you past the training ground and into the barracks. Um, and it was from this moment that you were assigned uh, your squad and your squad leader, um, who then began to train you uh, in the ways of, of, for all intents and purposes, the fighters. Um, But you uh, officially began your training um, in the Dragoon uh, Company. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for the past six to eight months, this is what you've been doing. It's like you you don't really sleep. You don't... Do the Warforge eat? They don't have to. They don't have to. So, like, outside of... Well, how do you want to play that? Would would he eat on occasion to make people... Yeah, so so he's going to eat... Um, a lot of my, my character's motives are going to be trying to find his place. Okay. Because even, even though, like, he knows... Come, coming into, into this this role, I feel like he would have known his in, initial objectives. But beyond that, it's he's training. So any any sort of um, influence uh, he might have from his training buddies and and whatnot, he's gonna take that in. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if he's if if they're if he does form any sort of bonds or friendships and they're eating, he's going to eat with them and drink with them and. Uh, drink stupid amounts of alcohol because it doesn't affect him and <laughs> has does no... he have um poison resistance and stuff uh yes I, I believe um i believe i'm immune to disease but uh i think i have resistance to poison yes correct so the resistance would mean that it just takes takes more to do the same so i could still get you um, still get intoxicated but it takes more okay Right, they have advantage essentially against being poisoned, is what it says here. Uh, so yeah, basically a, a courtesy, um, you're trying to show etiquette when you when you eat and stuff like that. Right, so right. you don't have to sleep, but you will like lay down <laughs> so that you're not, or you you work. You have seen only one other warforge in okay. this entire village, and I do. And so um, as far as uh, you know, how they sleep. How that works does he do a trance so um warforged during their long rest they have to take six hours of a motionless inactive state okay but they're not rendered unconscious and they see and hear as normal so yeah I'm, so like I'm, a trance i'm not yeah i'm not asleep but i like i have to power down right um so i i assume i would probably just go sit in a corner or sit in a chair or something off to yeah. the side um do you close your eyes when you, when you go to sleep? Uh, do you no. have eyelids, or is it like a light? So 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 partially partially kind of how I imagine my face is um like the the K two S O design like as far as like the two two big eyes. Okay. Um, I th- I'm, I'm thinking, and at least as far as like his head looks, kind of has, like that skull shape. Um, and I'm, I'm probably gonna tweak that a little bit when i get to it but uh i think uh yeah my eyes would be open no well so does he have eyelids or is it like in like the lights they'd be more on? like lights okay it's so, like if you power down then like the lights will like dim or, clo- or like yeah they would, i would say dim, dim dim at least or maybe they would uh maybe they would kind of mimic eyelids where they would shut. <laughs> <laughs> i like that dude yeah. i like it so much uh cool um i would also as far as like um my etiquette and and things like that go anything that uh that commander um i would probably try to emulate okay 
Uh, so like I said, it's been six to eight months. Um, and today is the day every every month or so, every two weeks to a month, um, you get um, we're kind of like like uh, they're um, assessment tests, right? Matches essentially mm. where you get the a squad will be taken out to the training ground and matched up against um, an opponent or opponents to test their skills to see if they've uh, improved if they're on on par where they need to be um, uh, so you know that today is the day for your squad um, and that you were on the itinerary to be tested. Yep. Um, this will turn you from initiate into actual infantry. Um, and so you are, uh, it, it's bright, it's early. Um, you're in the, in the barracks, you wake up, um, I guess power on. <laughs> and then waking up too would be very abrupt. Like I, okay. there, uh, like there wouldn't be like you know how we how we wake up. We just kind of, right. We gotta like motivate ourselves to get out of bed. So my eyes will come on and I'll stand straight up. Yeah, stand just straight up and start walking. Room. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. And I, I'd, I'd probably, um, I imagine is is everybody in in like this initiate, uh, initiate like group? Are they all pretty prompt? As far as getting up, it's like the military. So like, uh, you're gonna wake up at you know, oh five hundred hours. And there's and probably like, like a some sort of wake up call. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Okay. So they use um, kind of rudimentary, but they use um, quote unquote trained roosters. Yeah. Um, in that they're trained in the sense that they, you know, are encouraged to be alert at the because normally I don't know if you've been around roosters in real life, but at about four thirty, five o'clock, they're loud as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, essentially, that um, you notice that this village does like it's a self-sustaining village. Um, they try and keep mostly to themselves in that they don't need anything, no supply supply lines really, unless absolutely necessary. Is this um, at, and this is at like the base of of the mountain. Yeah. So like like. Uh, probably a four to five hour travel you could be at the actual mountain like an actual mountain okay, so pretty so much you can I see, can see it a, yeah a like imagine like montana right so like anywhere you look it's just like like grasslands and mountain you know just everywhere i just got that the, the image montana. of that like that fat cat that's that meme where he's like <laughs> <laughs> above the mountain <laughs> Uh, awesome. <laughs> that displayed in my hood. <laughs> You're just like going through memes while everyone else is sleeping. <laughs> I've got pupils that appear. Yeah, like, yeah, like 16 tabs are open of memes and like two of them are videos and you're watching cat videos. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Sorry, squad. <laughs> um, God, I, I kind of want that cannon now. Uh, like you're playing back. <laughs> Playing back like memories or recordings that you have of shit you see, <laughs> awesome. When I roll poorly on like insight or history or <laughs> anything, that's what I just start seeing is there's a cat. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, uh. howling <laughs> above the mountain. <laughs> um. So it crow the roosters crow. Your squad's getting up, quick, fast, in a hurry. In your squad, there's only eight plus you. Um. Has my garb changed at all since coming here? Or do I still wear like the same tattered? Uh, it will, as soon as you're past initiate. Okay, so, so initiate. So no, we're, we're still yeah. wearing essentially what we came in with. Yeah, uh, you especially. You notice that like the other recruits, the other, um, the you know, soft skin, fleshy bits, they have to change their clothing a lot, which is weird, um, because you just have your skin all the time, um, and then you wear your cloak essentially um by and large it's just to brandish the brooch Mm -hmm. uh you don't you don't need it right by any means of course um 
So yeah, the, uh, but you do know that you will get um, actual armor and like actual clothing. Uh, you'll get like a tunic and armor when you're brought into the ranks. Um, so they call you guys out. Uh, your squad leader jumps in real quick, peeks, uh, peeks his head in, and he says, Squad! We gotta be out there in less than five minutes. Hurry up! And he's gonna run out. Um, it's just a uh, medium-sized human, dark hair, um, scruffy-looking, little little round in the face. Um, but you see that he's quick, fast, and in a hurry. Okay. Yeah, I'll. Uh, um, if I if I get up and walk straight for the door, I won't leave without my squad, but I'll I'll be ready. Like, okay. Yeah. So you're pretty much waiting. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're like trickling out as soon as, as soon as they're ready to go. So like they'll trickle out and go right into formation. Yep. Um, I'm just in, I'm there there in formation. Okay. So yeah, you'll be like pretty much the first, you're always like the, either the first or the first top three. Yeah. Um, who are always in formation. I'm not concerned about beating anyone there. It's just. Yeah. What I do. What are you going to do? Right. (laughs) You've been waiting (laughs) to get up for the last eight hours. Um, Everyone falls in formation. Squad leader is off to the left of the of the formation, um, and you see the uh, base commander come out, and it is this um, stout dwarf uh, who looks thin in the face, but like wide in the body, and he has he's always in full fledged armor um, with like a nice cape that goes over the side a red a red cape that goes over his right side um he has a, a great axe um that he's always carrying around the greatest that, um, it's his greatest axe um body spray and it almost drags on the ground because of how low yeah. he is to it um, and how large the weapon is um and he almost always has his helmet on but on occasion, when you do see him, this is a person, by the way, that nobody goes up and talks to. You don't, you don't go up to him, and if he has to talk to you, it's always bad. Yeah. Um, or it has to be, you know, an event, uh, to which he, you know, a ceremony in which he's addressing stuff. Um, and uh, um, this base commander, he, you know, pulls his helm from his head, and he's holding off on his left side, and you see just the reddest hair uh in straight mohawk that as soon as he takes it off is in perfect form uh going back like very um punk style um and uh thin like a thin beard like he has a very long beard but it looks like he thins it on purpose Mm -hmm. um very very well manicured and he he looks out at all of you and he says what are you so now, what are gonna do with this squad? And you'll have to prove yourselves by the numbers. And I want to see the very best of you doing your very best. Because if I have to get any of you out of here, it's gonna look ugly. And I promise you, you won't be coming back. And you won't be working anywhere else. Right? So, do us proud and show me what you got. Uh, and then he's going to go over and you, you now notice that off to the side, um, something that's not normally there is this very, um, cushioned chair. Uh, it looks kind of like a stool, but like with a couple of arms on it. Um, and this backing to it, uh, that raises fairly high and he sits on it, um, and kind of slumps into it and starts fiddling with his, with his facial hair. Um, and the uh, squad leader is like, all right. <sighs> and he calls um, a couple of names. And some of your squad goes out and you watch them be tested. Um, to, like each of them having their own time. Um, and you're third. Uh, and he calls out, all right. Designation R9731. It's your turn. Get in the ring. Um, and uh, what do you do? Uh, so yeah, I'll get up and head into the ring. What's um, 
Your, what, what is the practice sword? Your practice sword is going to be a short sword, non-lethal damage. Okay. So. Um, so carrying it in my left hand, I hold it. Does everybody else have like a... a uh, everyone who's initiative, they all just have... No, it's just bear. So like there's no no scabbard, no... no okay. yeah. um, so I just so I carry it in my, in my left hand by the blade. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. All right, yeah. I'll stand up and just walk with purpose there and... Okay. I'm gonna. So. Um, so this has been several months since we've been doing this. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll just I'll walk in and and R nine seven three one reporting for action. Um, and as the squad leader is about to open his mouth and introduce. Um, so so what you've noticed for the other two was that. Um, other infantry who've already been accepted into the company come and spar. Oh, okay. Um, and you've witnessed them fight, and they don't always have to win, uh, but you have to be able to, you recognize that you have to be able to um, uh, show that you have learned the concepts and that you can do them. And if you do lose, it doesn't go well for you, but it doesn't mean you're out. Right. Um, if you lose, like, badly, right, then you're obviously out. If it do, if you show that you haven't learned anything and you can't do much of anything, um, then you're out. Right. Uh, I just whiff a whole bunch and get my butt kicked. Yeah. Um, he's so your squad leader is about to uh, motion towards uh, an infantry member who's um, notices the motion and, and starts to walk. And that's when the uh, post commander um, puts up a hand and says, Hold it! All right! Just wait! I am going to invoke our policy of criminal justice. Right? So, as you know, As you know, um, as a part of doling out justice, what we like to do in this region is for misdemeanor crimes can be carried out uh, penance by doing community service. Right. So, uh, what I have for you today is you're going to be going up against two of ours who are going to be doing out their penance and see what you got so go ahead now bring out the prisoners and um, let's see what this um thing's got and he's gonna sit back down and the infantry member who was gonna come out was kind of kind of confused and like sets um the weapon back to their side uh and the squad leader is like uh, uh, Ab absolutely yes sir and heads off the ring um can I, and can i roll like insight to, to try to wonder like is this a normal like, uh thing yeah you don't have to do insight but you you know law of the land for the most part this is a very it's not it's an uncommon occurrence but it's a common practice right so, but as far as being like a, a trainee or an yep. initiate, this is this is um, this is something that your normal initiate hopes that doesn't happen, but it's a hundred percent that it could happen, right? And right. it's it's you know happened to quite a few people over the last few years. Okay. So but it's kind of like the it's kind of the thing like oh I hope this cycle we don't get one of those mm -hmm. right like. And if we do, that it does not mean. Right, I hope it doesn't end up being me. Yeah, okay. but it's not like a oh, you know, they're pulling out a special event just to fuck with me. Like that's not, that's not what's happening. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not not because like I'm a war forge. No. Or anything, yeah. yeah. Um, but definitely like a a limit breaker. Like see what they got. Right. Right. Um, to test me, maybe, maybe I show more promise. Promise. Than yeah. Some. Exactly. So do I see? There's two of them. They are coming to the ring now. Yep. Um, they're not in chains. They are in in uh, worn leather garb, um, like 
your hand-me-down patchwork might have taken an arrow or two and like um the the armor has not them um and that now they've just been outfitted with this um are they been been they're being handed a weapon as well yeah it, they're being handed uh just they're they're pretty much um uh just practice swords they don't they're not even as nicely done as your um yeah why can't i think of the the name of it it's not uh Boken? Yes, a Boken. Thank you. I kept going Bushido, and I'm like, that's not it. That's not it. No, I have Bokens, and I yeah. couldn't even remember. Yeah. So it's not even as, as well-crafted as a Boken. Um, they are just like like um, regular practice swords that like are seem, angular. Like like, yeah, exactly. Like They're angular. They have that triangular tip. Right. Um, and uh, they're, they're into it. Like, they're like, yeah. Like, they, if you were to have to pay your penance... Um, and you were of a violent inclination, this would be the best way to go about it. And it seems like that's what's happening here. So they're pretty pumped. Um, they're excited to, to yeah. find me. And with that, let's roll initiative. Are there any other um, training swords around? Uh, not in the ring, no. Okay. No, each of you have, have one. Yeah. Ten. Okay. Uh, ten flat? Uh, seven on the die. Yeah, ten. Okay. So, you go and then they go. Um, they got a nine and a two. Yeah. So. Ooh. All right. Uh, they are both roughly, uh, 30 feet from you. Um. They're 35 feet from you. So, knowing that they're here for a penance what um so typically this is like a they've committed a crime of a violent nature or just any misdemeanor it's just a misdemeanor okay. yeah yeah but because they seem to be very into it sometimes you get people you watch people who come into these rings who are like upset that they because they're not fighters and so now they have to fight right. and they're fighting against you know fighters people who have at least been trained yeah and so many people have lamented having to do this. In this specific case, both of these people seem pumped to be able to do this. Okay. Um, so as uh, battle starts, my, my eyes are going to turn red. Oh, shit. <laughs> Combat activated. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, awesome. Uh, what would you like to do? I will... Does either one of them look bigger at all or are they pretty the one on the left seems physically bigger but only by inches both in in like musculature and height okay. so not not massively they're both human right yeah medium okay. well yeah i'll just uh i'm gonna uh, go for the bigger one initially at least okay so i'm just gonna walk and swing on my sword and let's see how does that work if i can remember so I get plus five, so eighteen. All right, that's a hit. Yeah. And these are d six. Uh, yep, d six plus your strength or dexterity, whichever you're you're fighting with. Okay. Four damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you, how how is the strike? Is it like a straight up, like as if you were to pull it from your scabbard, and striking, or is it like that you were just holding it? Yeah, right now it's gonna. I think my my fighting style probably will won't develop into that for for a minute. But it, and, awesome. unless that's what's awesome. been, unless that's what's been trained. Uh, kind of. I think that it would be very um, like realistic to think that you wouldn't be refined yeah i think everything everything i do now is going to be pretty rough and, yeah you're essentially going for your white belt I'm right very now. rigid so like it's if i hold it i still like pull it like i'm yeah got a sort of, so like i just kind of hold it like right here and just walk straight <laughs> at them and... um straight against the neck yeah and he f he feels it i'm still fighting with you know dexterity so it's not just brute strength that i'm using but um, okay but it is very so you know, I walk up, and then maybe, maybe as I strike, it'll look a little more fluid. Like, okay, 
kind of thing. Yeah, so the actual, like, you're holding it very rigid, and then when you actually do the strike, it's very... Right. Like, and then return up here? Yes. Awesome. Uh, so then... And I, I'm, I'm not just standing like like this. I mean, I've, I've taken kind of right. a, a battle stance. But it's, but like, rigid right. and stiff. Right, it's, the just, whole thing. it's very still. Awesome. Uh, they're going to go... Um, your AC is what? Uh, I'm unarmored. Yeah. 14. 14. Awesome. Okay. So I get, a, I get one for being warforged and then three from my nets. Awesome. Uh, so the first one strikes you back and the second one just like fumbles through and misses you, but also positions himself, um, to your flank. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first one that hits you, um does damage and we'll get into that right now with d6 okay uh four three damage yeah. Yeah. um when he strikes you he goes straight like for the softest bit of your torso that you can see, which is like right underneath your sternum, mm -hmm. it's not all that soft, right. but it's it's the best he could find. Right. He hits right in there, and you hear him go ah like that because he can definitely feel it in his neck where you hit him, right. and he's trying to give as good as he got. Probably feels like a like when you're swinging a baseball bat and steals yeah, hands. <laughs> he's like a little little mad that it hurts while he's swinging. Right. So he's like <laughs> ah and like hits you. No. Um... Yeah, he was my initial target, so I'm still going to turn to him and, and swing again. Okay. Ten. Uh, ten misses. Mm -hmm. So yours, you get hit, and you come straight up with it, and it just barely, like, you touched his nose um, as he went about it. Both hits. For a total of six damage. Ouch. So... Uh, they, he, before you goes high and behind you goes low. So the one behind you hits you in the back of your kneecap. And as that's happening, the one before you hits you against your chest. Okay. I'll take a, uh, as I'm, as I'm being hit in the back of the knee, I'll probably kind of pop down and then pop back up. Okay. And then, uh, we'll take a swing. Uh, flat 20. Awesome. Five damage yep. to the same one. Same one. So you get hit in the back and hit in the chest. And as you get hit in the chest, you just like look straight, straight into his soul and just come straight down in the most precise strike, uh, power strike going down. And it, you can hear the crack against his skull. Uh, it definitely breaks open the skin, and you might have broken his nose as well. And he like. Closes his eyes, drops his weapon, and like sits down and slumps his head down. And it's um, like his arms are drooped down, his head's hanging low, blood's just kind of dripping from his head now. Can I, can I pick up his practice sword? Uh, give, mm, yeah. Now uh, give me a reflex. Uh, flat 20. Awesome. So you strike down, and as you strike down, you see that his arms are going up. That's the first thing your your focus goes to. And with one hand, you just cup underneath of his hand, twist, and pull it uh, to your offhand. Mm -hmm. Now you're dual wielding. Sweet. Um, cool. So the other one behind you is like, Oh, shit! And then strikes in a lunge and hits you right in the side in your obliques um, for one point of damage. And he's going to uh, back up about 15 feet. I do look a little stumbly. <laughs> okay. Um, so he's, he's moved away from you at this point for 15 feet. Okay. If you'd like an attack of opportunity. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got a 19 on the die. Yeah. Seven. Okay. So as he's leaving, you hit him right in his elbow. 
uh, that's like his his uh, right right elbow, and he like hears it crack and he's like ah oh no, <laughs> uh, but then he turns like. Um, as he gets about 15 feet away, he turns back to you and is like trying to cup it in, trying to like shield the pain, um, from looking too vulnerable. And he looks, he looks pretty pissed. I, I will then, I guess I'll walk up to him and swing with my Boken first. Uh, eight. So that's a miss. And then I guess I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead and swing with the, the other one. It's a 19 on the die. Nice. What's the damage on these? Uh, you don't add your, your modifier, but it's a D, D6. D6? Yeah. Two. Okay. Uh, you did eight and then two, right? Or did you do six and two? Uh, the f- seven. Seven and then two, I think. We'll play it back. I'm pretty sure you, okay. Um, I should have probably wrote it down. Who knows? Shoot, yeah, because I can't remember for certain. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, I'm pretty sure you did eight. So we're going to go with tan damage total. Um, so as you come up to him, you're getting a better better feel for the flow of um, combat. Yeah. And with your main hand, you pull... Uh, this is the miss. Was that you actually did what you wanted to and that you you string up his uh, weapon. And then with your off hand, you just butt him with um the hilt of it uh or the pommel with the pommel of it um into his nose break it again uh doing the whole situation and he like drops his weapon cups his nose and drops to his um elbows and knees and is like holding his his face um and then you pull to your kind of default combat position and you hear all right well done good job Get the fuck out the ring! <laughs> um, and that's and you see them kind of like um, the the one that's holding his nose is kind of getting up to his feet and running over to his friend and like trying to wake him up, <laughs> like get him. Um, and then you see the the ones who kind of ushered them to the ring come into the ring and usher them back out. Um, yeah, do you get out the ring? Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, uh, before that, I'm gonna go pat. Pat the one that's still awake on the shoulder. Okay. <laughs> well fought, human. <laughs> um, you you just hear him like murmuring, like <laughs> no. My eyes are still red. I was on the <laughs> Um. Awesome. So as you leave uh, the ring, uh, as I as I exit the ring, I'm I'm going to um, verbally say. Uh, what would be uh, uh, guess combat de-escalated <laughs> as I walk out? It's like the eyes, like like an eyelid closing but changing color. Right. Or or would it be like a dimming situation? Yeah, they would. They would kind of like maybe dim out of red and then back to blue. Okay. Yeah, that's your. I don't know. It's it's all up to you. I change it up. Yeah. Well, you know, depends on the day. Yeah. Yeah, it's feeling blue today. Yeah, it's like a mood ring, but different. Maybe I'll be green tomorrow. Yeah, who knows? Maybe yellow at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely not brown. Right. <laughs> black. That's scary. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> black light. Right. It looks like a the the dark lightsaber, whatever it is, the black lightsaber. The man Did Warforged? I don't know. I might not have dark vision. I don't think you do. I don't think so. I don't know why that just came to my mind, but they've got I mean, like black. little like light up eyes. Lights. Yeah. Uh, what if like you get the the augmentation to have like uh, a black light? Right. <laughs> For eyes, you just see. Oh, uh, that'd be pretty cool. Like we're going yeah. to an investigation, and I'm mm-hmm. like, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scanning. Um. Protein found. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, I need to laugh like really awkwardly. Uh, too. Uh, 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 like you're like half barking. <laughs> yes, dude, the tightest laugh. Please. <laughs> uh, they do have dark vision. They have sixty feet in it. My man, dark vision. We got a fact checker. I know. Yeah. 
Alright. Uh, well done. Beep! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking beep! Um, don't use his actual name. We, we call him Carl. Well done, Carl. That's right. We can just wait, 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 what, what did I call you last time? I said you're gonna be... Chad. Was it Chad? Yeah, you're yeah. gonna be Chad when you're not in trouble, and Carl when you are in trouble. Coral! Coral? That kills people! Um... Cool, so you get you get done, a couple others get tested as well, one in your squad fails out, but he was kind of dead weight, and everyone kind of felt like he was going to yeah. fail out anyway. Um, I knew he was going to fail out. And it's waited until uh, everyone's done when the um, uh, post commander makes good on his promise. And as you were all about to be dismissed, he goes over to the flunky, grabs him by the back of his hair, and he's shorter than this this uh, man. Um, pulls him down to his level like an angry uh, uh, grandma, you know, pull him by the ears, but like by the back of the hair, and drags him out of the village. And you hear crying and whimpering and swacks like. Um, there is some sort of commotion, and no one is allowed to go outside the vi village for that time until he comes back in. How long? <laughs> uh, it only lasts a couple of minutes, yeah. but that those couple of minutes for everyone else who is accustomed to pain, um, it lasts a lifetime. For those <laughs> what, are, what are the reactions of the uh, people around me? Like, oh shit. Like, oh. <laughs> like, do, like, um, like, when your parents are mad at one of your siblings... And they're so mad that, like, it's borderline you could be in trouble. So, like, you just don't say anything. That type of thing. Um, he comes back in. His hair is fine. Uh, his hair's fine. Yeah, his hair's <laughs> fine. Um, his clothes are a little bit, like, messed up. The uh, uh, post commanders. Um, but the initiate doesn't come back in. Um and he, the post commander, goes right back to his office. He doesn't say anything to anybody else. Nobody asks him anything, and he just, he just goes. Um, you get back to your barracks, on your bed, on your cot, your bed where you, where you quote unquote sleep. Um, <clears throat> there are, there is a tunic, that is, uh, neatly folded. Very, all of this is very military. Um, and to the left of it, there is armor and uh, a katana, a, a wakasashi, and a tanto. Okay. Um, there is a new uh, cloak, which is very much like the shoulder cape that he was wearing. Um, it's a uh, kind of like a burgundy. Um, it doesn't look dirty by any means, but it looks like it's it's been used. Um, like somewhat worn, but like still very um, pristine in its like presentation. Mm -hmm. um, it has the same sigil, but an actual like uh, refined brooch. I'm, that... en I'm envisioning kind of for for my character more like a poncho. <laughs> yeah, but not multicolored. Right. Like one solid burgundy color. Yeah. Right. Um. And the brooch doesn't look like, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, like hairpin or whatever someone threw together. It's like a proper, uh, you know, regal brooch. Um, yeah, and, and your squad leader says... It's uh, a weird thing to say. Yeah. Squad I, leader. I say the same thing back. <laughs> um, your squad leader says... Uh, Congratulations, everyone. You, you did great. Um, real proud of you. You did this barracks proud. And uh, um, as a... Uh, is, is there a lot of, like, revelry in, within the group? or No, it's like a quiet celebration. Okay. Like a holy fuck, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. Like a bit, like, like alleviated. Like we did at, like... But everyone looks like they've been beaten to half their life or less. So this is a pretty grueling training regimen. Yeah. Just not... Maybe to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, you what I you got? got I got, you got bloodied, up, right? But as far as like um, 
the reaction of which. Well, like stamina and endurance and things like that. I guess how does that? They look stoic. They look as as stoic as you in comparison, right? So like they're they're humans. They're half elves. They're things of that nature. So they they are mushy bits. Yeah. Um, and so that you can hear them pant on occasion, but everything is very reserved. Right. Um, so whatever pain they may be feeling, whatever exhaustion they may be feeling, it doesn't show. Mm-hmm. Most of them. Okay, so they're pretty good. So, yeah. And, it, and I mean, in terms of like bruising and things like that, I would still have um, scrapes and, and things, you know, uh, uh, into my, my plating and whatnot, too. So. What? I imagine you secrete a liquid when you're bloodied. Um, how do we want to go about that? Do you like the idea of like a, a coagulated blue or green purple purple um so there are parts of your torso that seem to be in the in the softer portions seem to be um uh brandishing more of a a purplish tint on it the actual metal itself seems to be hued um possibly showing a you know, a, a contusion mm-hmm. on there. Um, and so, yeah, you would still bruise, but in your own way. Right. I kind of got a mental image to you that I thought was kind of cool. Um, almost like a, like a steam, like a, like, you know, yeah. shooting out if, if like I'm significantly damaged, uh, that maybe that'd be a way to, to sell it. It's like the bruising and, and things like that would probably be pretty natural or if, or if my face got beat up and I had like a bloody nose uh, type situation then so like some steam comes out right right like or like if yeah if my uh, like my torso or my more armored spots are uh, opened up maybe that's like a little tss. right right and, and not like a big like smoky steam but like a like a vapor yeah yeah uh yeah so as soon as the the squad leader leaves um i'm sorry he hasn't left yet he says uh his uh congratulations you guys did just very proud um he says um the actual ceremony will start in 10 minutes i need you to be freshened up uh with in in full um battle rattle and um looking pristine in formation um and have that time so Congratulations, but hurry up. So I do need, like, for a Warforged to implement their armor into their body, I need more time than that. Okay, how... The, the, well, like, to well, implement it or to, it to it dawn takes, it? To take, it says it takes an hour for me to, to put it into, like, my... To... But not to, like, dawn it, though, right? Not to actually wear it on the outside? Yeah, I mean, like, if, if... Is that something I'm capable of? Uh... Not, not practically, um, but cosmetically. So, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll do, I'll do it however I need to, at least for now. Right. So yours will be yours will be fitted as best possible. Um, uh, where you put your tunic on, then you put your armor on, then you then you um, don your. Mm-hmm. your weapons um and then you guys head out in formation um and your uh the post commander is back out there once more but he has his helmet on this time and he says uh all right look at ya you're doing great you're done great and now you're a part of the dra- dragoon <laughs> company that was harder to say Part of the Dragoon Company. And we're glad to have you. And do us proud. Keep training. Keep pushing yourself. And show no mercy to the enemy. Great. Uh, the next thing we need to do is... And then you hear... Uh, and everyone begins to disperse and go uh you guys in your squad in your formation don't move yet 
Um, and uh, you hear him say, Battle stations! Get around! We're gonna move out! And he runs to his office. Um, Have we gotten any designated battle stations at least at this point yeah you guys know like these are these are common drills you know exactly where you're gonna need to go you essentially need to go back into um the uh the barracks quick fast in a hurry to grab anything you missed um and then reform uh, in formation at the at the beginning of the or at the entrance of the village okay um in this it wouldn't be a miss that you could take this time to properly uh, equip your armor. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely work on that as best I can then. Um, let's see, with this. Also, so as far as uh, if, if I'm doing like a quick short rest, uh, I'm going to take a hit die to heal? You cannot rest. Okay. Um, so resting, I, so I was looking at it, and there was an argument that if you're just traveling that you could be doing a rest, and... Um, that is true if you're traveling, say, if you're being transported versus right. having to walk or ride. Physically walking. Yeah, and even riding. Even riding takes more than... It um, takes some focus. Or yeah. Because like, like, if you're driving, even, probably. Yeah, so be like you can't be... Yeah, you can't be exerting yourself in any fashion. Okay. Um, and a short rest is an hour. So, uh, in this, you will don your, your actual armor... Um, walking information, you get to the entrance of the village and you're noticing that you guys are actually um, marching. There's marching orders. Um, and you guys move out and you're heading towards the mountain. And you're heading at um, normal pace up until a rider comes and addresses the uh, post commander. And then you hear him call, Double time at! Double move it! And so you guys are now kind of double time marching um and it takes quite a bit but you guys merge with uh cavalry um company and an artillery company um and so something big's happening what's everybody's general expressions as most far as everybody even even the most veteran of the people who have been at your base are uh are kind of concerned this has never happened there's never been there have been missions that they've gone on there have been patrols there have been um like raids that they had to counter things of that nature there's never been such an event that required the actual army mm -hmm. uh, the actual factional army of this um so when we start kind of conjoining and stuff that's a little yeah, more you see the same concern on the artillery's face on the cavalry's face um, where they're trying to keep it together, but they're also like, holy shit, like something big's happening. And they all trained in the same village as well? Yeah. Well, no, not in the same village, same area. Same so area. different villages, same same area. Right. Um, and so you guys head up this, this mountain, um, and it isn't until you hit the, uh, the I don't say illustrious, but the, the um, kind of fabled, Arbiters, who are Aarakocra dragoons, um, who are said to live at the top of mountains um, and deal strictly with uh, the lead of this um, dragoon company, um, who are directly under the Grand Marshal herself. Uh, it isn't until they join your ranks that almost everybody shits themselves. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Um, and as you guys uh, uh, form, you are now winding through to another mountain peak. Um, and then you're brought to a halt. And you hear it goes, it goes the arbiters at the beginning. It goes Grand Marshal first and all the other officers, then the arbiters, uh, then the infantry, uh, artillery, and then cavalry. Um, I'm sorry, cal uh, cavalry, and then artillery. Um, so you can hear the muffled, uh, talking of the Grand Marshal to the Arbiter, um, uh, faction, uh, and then kind of vaguely see over people the pointing, um, kind of like they're, they're pointing around the next bend, um, and then you hear the, 
or you see the the call sign for stealth uh, to be quiet and um, about five to ten minutes maybe even the longest five to ten minutes that most of these people have felt in their lives um, goes by and then finally the motion for forward movement comes and uh, faction by faction your um, the ranks begin to move quietly um, and then as soon as the infantry are almost around the bend and you see that there is a the mouth of this cave um, you see fire blasting out of this mouth of the cave um, and then shortly thereafter the arbiters come out um, and they're being pursued by uh, several young dragons um, hard to say the coloration due to like the clouds up here this high um, and how fast they're moving but they all kind of shoot out like bats from a cave um, and then you hear the calls of your of your uh, squad commander or your squad leaders of of uh, prepare pull move forward infantry forward um, and you guys are charging the mouth of this cave um, how many of uh, are there of like this army right now so you guys are on a pass uh the actual pathway is about um about 60 to 7 feet 70 foot wide so it's a very large uh pathway and your just the infantry alone is at least 100 strong um so there's a few few hundred at least yeah and then yeah and then you have horses and you have um artillery is any, anything from ballistics uh, ballistas to uh, crossbowmen to um, you know bowmen. Well, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you hear the release of arrows from behind you. You hear the neighing of of horses. They're trying to get through you. Um, and very chaotic. Yeah. And you, uh, as you come to the mouth of this cave, um, you hear the rumbling roars of multiple dragons um and then uh and these massive gusts hit the infantry um and as the second and then the third hit you hear your squad commander say forward and everyone begins to charge forward um as you do weapons drawn uh this massive what seems like either a rust colored or a red dragon it's hard to tell um hits the first two lines of infantry with his chest and then the rest are swept back by the the breath of his um of his wings uh so give me a strength saving throw 13. 13. You are pushed 20 foot back. So into people, through people, um, and just above you, this massive adult dragon, maybe, maybe even bigger, who knows, um, flies over you. <laughs> and then, um, uh, so what do you want to do? Um, I'm certainly not... So what's the the general uh, feeling? Are people? I mean, are they terrified right now? Are people are still, trying to fight. They're still trying to fight, but they're so chaotic. They're not even sure what they're fighting. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll try to uh, to to do to do my best to to fight back as well. Uh, my eyes are gonna t t t turn red. Okay. Um, I'm going to, of course, uh, speak out. Combat initialized. And, <laughs> awesome. And, uh, draw my swords um do you get up to your feet yeah absolutely all right give me a reflex save so I'll, st I'll stand up seven okay as you stand up combat initialize your eyes go red um you have your sword once more you feel uh a bearing weight down on you and then a grasp around you as talons uh kind of come um grasp you right grasp your body 
and you see beside you as well someone who was kind of hunched over and was getting up is also grabbed and before you can even react you're being pulled into the air um, by this young dragon uh, it's kind of bluish in nature um, and you hear it going Aah! as it's pulling you and this other individual away what do you want to do you are now about 60 50 about 50 feet off of the ledge um well <laughs> that's a precarious position to be in <laughs> um uh, yeah, so uh, uh, in, in noting my surroundings, I'm going to say out loud, um, d- danger imminent. <laughs> I'm gonna tr- I want to try to wrestle myself free, of course, but I want to try to climb it, like climb on it. Okay, I need an opposing grapple check. Yep. I don't really want to just free myself and fall, but I want to be in control of where I'm at. Uh, 15. 15? Okay. So it rolled a nat 18. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were, you were clutched. Yeah, I'm still tr- I'm struggling. Okay. As you're struggling, you feel yourself um, be pulled even higher, like a quick upburst of movement, and then let go. And now you're free-falling, and your buddy is free-falling beside you. Um. And you, you drop further and further Danger and further. Danger certain. <laughs> certain death. And you have you have in your inner workings the beep, 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 beep. Critical, critical. Can I right? see altitude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's just your, your, uh, your like horizon gauge is going everywhere as you're like falling. Um, and your body rotates such that you finally get to see the ground coming at you. And then you're kind of going head first. And then you realize that as soon as you break through the clouds, um, there's a large river below you. And the last thing you remember is hitting the water. Um, Everything goes black. Uh, Sometime later, had to have been, um, your kind of vision comes in dimly. And you see that you're uh, in an interior of a of a hut type um shelter and um that there is a a serf or peasant type um woman and man who are doing something but you can't move your head um it's very foggy you can barely see you can hear them kind of talking in mumble tone hush tones um and then uh your vision goes black again and then comes back um and you are now outside and sitting upright against the hut um and your vision's more clear this time around but still kind of hazy in that you see that there's this uh very clearly a farmer who is reattaching or like trying to put back on a plate on your on your shin um and like uh readjusting your leg um and when your eyes come on, he, he goes, uh, oh, I, I see you're awake. And just as he says that, um, mounted marauders uh, approach the, the hut. Um, and you see him turn to face them with his hands up in the air. And he said, we, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. And he, he, they strike him down. Um, uh, you hear the screams of the woman. Um, and then nothing. Uh, she's somewhere in the maybe behind the hut or in the hut, but either either um, either way, she's quiet now. Um, and then it doesn't take long before uh, you see one of the marauders walking out of the hut from be- behind you, um, holding your armor and your weapons. Um, and as you can kind of tilt your head a bit, you can see that you're wearing a tattered tunic. Um, and uh, and your your cape, your, your what did you, poncho? poncho. Is that what you, your poncho, right? Um, it's still on you as well. It's like torn it's as well. Up. Yeah, it's torn and, and wrecked. 
Um, and uh, you see the marauder turn and look towards you, and in his mouth, a large cigar. And um, he motions with his head towards you, and he says, I don't know, let's take him. And uh, see if we can sell him for parts or something. And then two marauders grab you by your feet, by your ankles, and begin to drag you. And your vision goes black once more. Um, you come to, and your uh, your vision is still um, darkened. There's something over your face. Mm. Um, so even though you you can see plainly, there's cloth over you. Um, and then. Uh, the cloth is pulled from you and before you you can see a small boy maybe muscular like looks like a a Russian you know like (laughs) those Russian like muscular gymnast kids who are like too too buff for their own good yeah they're too too big right He's got you know soft features, but he, he and he has uh, handcuffs on. So when he pulls your the the cloth off your face, um, you can see him pulling his hands back to his body, um, and he goes, "No, he's he's got them on too." And um, you can actually move your head now, and you look down to see that you are manacled as well. Um, uh, you are now in a canvas covered cart that has iron bar cage uh, around it and there are a couple of older humans there's this boy who's in front of you um there is a raven uh like human thing um like a walking raven thing that's off to the left kind of huddled up there are um there's a uh a what you would imagine a devil person would look like with their multi kind of their their darker skin their horns um wearing a baker's hat uh chef's apron that says shiv the chef also manacled sitting with his tail in his lap um holding a spatula and a frying pan um and uh I think I hit everybody. Hold on. That sounds about right for so, who I know that is. <laughs> yeah. You. I think that's everybody, right? No. Uh, and yeah, that's everybody. That is everybody. Because. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because because the last one's not there with them. Yeah. Yet. Um, and uh. So the child, yeah. the raven, mm-hmm. devil, mm-hmm. and a human. Uh. Child, Raven, Devil, you. Child, Raven, Devil, you. And then, yeah, and then he's not there with you guys. The Wasn't there the, the pairing of two people? Yeah. They're, they're he's not, not together, though? One of them isn't with you guys. Oh. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Um, you hear, uh, uh, you hear the boy say, I wonder where they're taking us. And you hear the Kenku mimic um, uh, auction house. And that is where we'll call it. I'm going, and and uh, am I able to speak at all? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So Absolutely. my... Uh, um, I definitely think I want to do, like, as... Try to play it, like, almost as robotically as possible, at least to start, but... Um, to like preface questions he's gonna say inquiry auction house and then that, that'll Perfect. be yeah and then we'll fade to black 